Bless you, bless you, bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My name is Apostle Peter Daniel, by the special grace of God. I am speaking from Nigeria. You are watching me right now in Heaven and Air Live program, the one we used to do every Friday to Monday, uh, every Monday to Friday, uh, from 9 uh, a.m. every day, by the grace of God. Uh, today we want to go into the message, and I would like you to be attentive to listening well. I pray the Lord God will bless you in Jesus' name. The Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, the internal rock of age, the life living God, the almighty God, we bless your name. We give you the praises in Jesus' name. Our Lord and our God, we pray this morning. We pray, oh Father God, that you will open the eyes of everyone listening and looking at me right now. You will destroy every work of the darkness. You will destroy every work of the even one in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and our God. We ask for power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, that we make us to understand the things of the spirit father give to us in jesus name thank you father in jesus name we pray amen the lord bless you the mighty name of jesus christ it is well with your soul in jesus name ah uh, by the special grace of god we are going to speak on certain things according to what is in the scripture here we want to we want to i would like to explain some some things and uh the the the, the meaning of uh, i want us to open to our bible to the book of matthew chapter 10 matthew chapter 10 matthew chapter 10 uh verses uh, 34 verses 34 there uh, we, uh, we can we can start from that uh, 32 and we have we can come down so whosoever whosoever therefore shall confess me before men him will i confess also before my father which is in heaven yes but whosoever shall deny me before men him will i also deny before my father which is in heaven 34 he said take not that i am come to send peace on earth i come i i came not to send peace but a sword listen to me he said think not that i am come to send peace on earth i came not to send peace but a sword what are they using sword to they are using sword to kill they do use sword to to apply to to cut Yamahito. They use sword to for war. They use sword to kill. They use war for battle. They use a uh, sword for many things. Verse 35 he said, For I am come to set a man at variance against his father. Variance means uh, like a fight against his father. And the daughter against her mother, and the daughter in law against her mother in law. And the 36 says, And the man's fool shall be the that of his own household. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. I want us to read it down so that I can explain at once. He said, He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me and he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me he that findeth his life shall lose it and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it he that receiveth 
you received me. And he that received me, received him that sent me. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. If you go back to that 34, he said, Think not that I have come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but his word. The first thing I want you to understand as a Christian here is that the moment you have given your life to Jesus Christ, you have, you have become a warrior. The moment you have confessed, listen to me very well. The moment you have confessed Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you have entered into a personal war. You have entered into a war. You have become a soldier. And you know that a soldier is always ready for war. A soldier doesn't sleep in the battlefield. A soldier is not a weak man. It's not a weak woman. A soldier is always full with helmet, ready at all time. In the night, they are ready. In the evening, they are ready. In the afternoon, they are ready. In the morning, they are ready. At midnight, they are ready. There is no day you come against soldier that you can get it because a real soldier is an equipped man. Number one, before we go into the reinterpretation of what we read now, is that as a Christian, you need to buckle your bed. You need to be prayerful. You need to be fasting. You need to be full of fasting. You need to study the scripture. To the level whereby God will approve you. The book of Timothy says something. It says, study, study the word of God until you, are, you get the approval of God. You know, there are some starting time that you will study God, study the word of God to the level that your spirit will be saying, yes, I study the word of God today. And there are times you will study the word of God, but your spirit will be telling you you didn't study so you have to study the word of God to a level whereby you are going to get approved so that those pastors out there will not deceive you. Because a time is coming whereby when they see you reading the Bible, they will collect it from you and beat you up. A time is coming whereby you will be looking for a message you might not see. You'll be looking for a pastor to just give you a word of God you might not see. So that is why you need to know the scripture for yourself. So that all those pastors will not be twisting your head anyhow. Will not be twisting you anyhow. Imagine, a, 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 imagine some people are giving prophecy. A prophecy that a head of fish must not be eaten. Some are giving prophecy that they should not eat milk. They should not drink milk and tea. They should not use this and that. And people, Christians, are believing this. Some say that if you wear any colored clothes, you are going to hell. So different thing is people saying. Some are saying different thing entirely. Some say that if you wear canvas, shoe, sports shoe, that you are going to hell. If they have studied the Bible very well, you that they are telling you to, if you have studied the Bible very well, you will have understand that this is not the word of God. So you are, we are in the level whereby you need to study the word for yourself. That is part of your work. To equip yourself with the war, so that nobody will deceive you there. So that nobody will tell you that fornication is just for prayer. No. You will know. Say, my Bible says, my Bible says, number two, you must be prayerful. We are in a level whereby we need to be communing with the Father. 
Commune in your heart. Commune when you are walking. Commune with you. When you are walking, when you are doing things. Always communicating with God is one of the ancient things and very important things that a Christian must do. And number three, you must always fast. You see this body, you need to fast to make sure that you overcome it. The reason why you are still battling with sin was because you have allowed this body, you have fit him enough that he has become so grow that he grow more than your spirit man. And if this flesh grows more than your spirit man, it will always control you. There's no how. So you all have to subject this body under the law of God. Subject it. Make sure you overcome it. So that this flesh will not later change you to hell. This three things is one of the things that makes you a giant soldier in this journey we have. No word of God for yourself, prayer and fasting. Now, let's go back to what we just read. Take note that I am come to send peace unto the earth. I came not to send peace, but his word. Now, this is the problem that we are having now. The government is trying, it's not even the government only, but the religious leader, they wanted to bring peace to the world, which cannot be possible. They said they wanted to make a one world religion. So there, there should be a combination of a Muslim and a Christian and all those Buddhist people, all the other people who are worshiping idols, which should be come together as one. That from there, there will not be war anywhere. There will not be Boko Haram. It will be one person as a whole. Meanwhile, this is the plan of the Antichrist. This is what we all saw the Antichrist in for the ruling power of the Antichrist. Jesus Christ is clarifying it to us that he did not bring peace into us, into Christianity. Listen to me. It doesn't mean that he's trying to, he's going to divide the church. No. It's, it doesn't mean that it doesn't give us the peace of mind, no. But it's trying to, there is an interpretation which I'm going to tell you today. Let me give you an interpretation. You believe, you believe, what it's trying to say that it didn't bring peace into this world, it said into the head. But not that we are not going to have faith, we are not going to have peace, sorry, in the Christian door. Now, let me give an example now. You came from a Muslim background and you received salvation into your life. If you look at it very well, you have automatically go against your father and your mother and your family. Your father is a Muslim. Your mother is a Muslim. Your family is a Muslim. But you yourself, you jump out of that place to become a Christian. See, in that place, there's no way you're going to have peace there. And there's no way they're going to have peace there. That is what Jesus Christ is saying. They will be against each other. Your father will be shouting and telling you that, go back. That was this kind of, this, this kind of nonsense. And go back to Muslim something. But you will be instantly that Jesus Christ is the way. From there, there will be a fight. Do you know that countless people, countless souls, has been killed and been slaughtered because of this? The reason is because they accepted Jesus while their family didn't accept it. So the two different things has occurred. Then there will not be peace at all. Another thing is this. I'm talking about the Christian family now. Your husband is a Christian, you are a Christian. This is what I'm going to now. And you now accepted the gospel, the real gospel. In sense of, you accepted the real gospel, in sense of, you accepted the righteousness and the holiness gospel. Which is the only way to make it to heaven. You must not wear your ring, you must not wear trousers, you must not wear this, you must not wear that. This is a problem of the women. Listen to me, by the way. 
you must know where this is. And you accept this and you obey all these things. You make sure that you dress modestly. You make sure that all this hearing is taken away. They are the things of the world. All this makeup, you didn't use them again. You did all your trust that you went to go and burn them. You didn't give it to another, another person. Because when you give it to another person, you have committed another sin, a bigger one than before. So you went to go and burn it. When you went to go and burn it, in, in that sense, you make sure that all your body is clean. You didn't sin anymore. Meanwhile, your husband is a Christian, but he's a carnal Christian. He's going to church whereby they are preaching righteousness, not holiness. It be and meanwhile, your husband loves women to be wearing his in his skirt. He loves women to be wearing trousers. He loves women who is making wake up. Won't there be fight at all? They will be. They will be fight. That is what he was saying there. And as a Christian, you must be ready for that. Because the journey of heaven is a personal race. It's not your father, your mother race. It's not your sister race. It's not your husband race. It's not your wife race. If you are not able to stand on your own in this time, you are not qualified for heaven. That's what the Bible is saying here. You are not qualified for heaven. You must, you must accept it, Jesus Christ as if you are ready to die. That when they bring God to you to tell them, shoot the gun, I'm ready to stand on my feet. I'm ready to stand on my feet. Come what anything, I'm ready to stand. I'm ready to stand. Come what anything. He said, well, if you cannot obey my law in this house, I will send you away. I will go and marry another person. Tell him, this is the way of God. I'm standing on it. You didn't care whether he sent you out of the house. You didn't care about whatsoever thing that can come as a, a consequence of you, of you obeying the true word of God. You did not compromise. That is when you are a child of God and you are ready for heaven. If you compromise your faith, it means you are not ready. The journey we are is either you accept it and let's go together with the journey of Christ or you stay on your own, I stay on my own. That's the journey we have. And God and heaven will be looking at all the Christians to see whether you are going to decide in a right way or in a wrong way. That's what he's saying there. It is a level whereby your parent has collected jar, and you as a child, you have not collected And you tell them, sir, I might not be able to collect. And they were saying you must collect. There is a war there. That's what the Bible was saying. He said, I have not come to bring peace. Because the gospel of Christ is not, it's not, it's a it's like a thing that people cannot do. It's a road truth. Only, only few will obey. So God wants us to be ready for whatsoever what is going to happen. He said, for I have come to set a man various against his father. Eh? Why would he be when I believe in holiness and my father is a kind of Christian and he's telling me to do what is wrong and I tell him, no, I can't do it. I said, I, I, I am your father now. He said, to me, the Bible says that you should obey your father. I said, yes. In the same Bible that said, obey your father in the Lord. I will not disobey God and obey you. And what do you expect? He, he will be angry at me and want to fight me. That's what the Bible is saying. So for this point, in the level we have now, is a level whereby you have to take a decision. I remember a sister who came out from a rich family. His father and his mother, he totally changed and he changed his things. This sister will be buying cream that is worth 10,000 era. Just for body. 
everything they buy is always costly 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 things he came from a very wealthy family and i preached to her and she accepted jesus christ as a personal lord and savior and because she changed her attires i begin to wear a holiness clothes i'm always praying at home her father began to get angry at her as her mother began to convince her when his mother get to 11 he left her but her father get angry the more we later understand that our father is a courtist. Probably he did a ritual money. Money ritual. And the more the girl is praying, the more the prayer is attacking the father. And one day the father came inside you. And for no reason, and said, what is one of this straight up nonsense? Why are you not wearing your ring? Why are you not wearing this? And he said, please, why are you not wearing your ring? Why are you not wearing this? Is it compulsory I must wear? I'm asking you a question. Is it not her that has the body? A child of 24 years old. He says, it's not well. He said, because of the faith, I accepted in Christ. But I said, you accepted Christ. You, you, and just for that reason. And he started beating her like that. No reason. And he beat her to the extent that blood filled her mouth. And this, I found I've never beat her before. But you have to beat her just because of, you must go and wear your ring. To the level that I bought, he, he wanted to embarrass her, a grown up woman, a lady, publicly. She has to call me and said, Ha! Ah. He said, They have said, He has to run out of the home because the father threatened that he must, and she asked, You know, nobody have to allow her to come. She have to travel, and I tell her to stay with my parents. So when we begin to know her, when the father parent began to look for her, the father said that she didn't need, he didn't need her because he has successfully sent the way the prayer warrior of the house. And they came and said, ah, the police and this and this. Later, later, we allowed the girl to go back again. What I'm trying to say is just that this kind of incident has happened many times in many lives, many Christians, whereby you will be you, they will be persecuting you because of the kind of things you accepted because of jesus christ because of you accepting the road truth i'm here to tell you that the only solution for you to get to heaven is for you to stand on your faith stand on your faith the bible said he has not come to send peace but sword you cannot accept holiness and you also are not holiness and you will be having peace at all. It's not possible. So you, the, 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 the race of heaven is a personal decision. It's not compulsory that uh, your husband must accept it and your only wife must accept it. If you, if you know that you are the only one, you have conviction, it's not trying, you are trying to pray, you are, just keep praying for her or okay, keep praying for him. Stand on your feet. Buckle your bed. Then there's one thing I want you to know. That in the world we have now, we are not of this world. Anybody that is not following the scripture is of this world. And it's, rapture is not certain for the person. You are a child of God and you must prepare for heaven. In all means, whatsoever happened to you, it happens to you. When they come to you and claim you must do this, you must do that. And when you know what they are asking you to do, it's going to go against the will of God. Don't do it. Stand on your feet. Fight for your right. Stand for Christ. I pray we will not go to hell in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says something. It said, he that loveth his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth sons or daughters if because of your son or daughter you go and backslide, you are going to hell. Or because of your father or your mother, you go against the will of God, you are going to hell. I want to tell you a short story and we end up the pro we will end up the, 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 the message, the preaching. There was this a particular brother. It's a life story, a life incident. This particular brother is a Muslim. His own father is a imam. Amen. And one day, some Christian brother was is going around, you know, preaching the gospel house to house evangelism. And they met the brother sitting aside. 
and they preached the gospel to the brother. And the brother was converted, and he gave his life to Christ. As he gave to Christ, to Christ, he began to go to the church. They gave him a Bible, he began to go to church. When his father got to realize that he has become a Christian, his father is an imam, he gets very angry. And his brother loves his mother very well. His mother to get angry. All his brothers and sisters get angry. And the father has to carry cocklaps. He said he will cut the boy into two. And the man was very sincere with his word. So when the brother sees that the man is chasing him around, he has to carry the Bible around out of the house. And went to stay with the Christian brother. Well, after some weeks, he went back home again to go and greet his spirit. When he saw his father, his father said, you this bastard, what do you come here to do? Then he began to raise curse on him. Then he went to his mother. The mom that, that he loved so much, he said, who are you? He said, mommy, my mommy. He said, don't call me your mother again. I am not your mother. You are a bastard. I didn't give birth to you. And you will know when your parent is denying his tight. And he loves her mother, his mother so much. He went to his brothers and sister. They too started on him and said, please, you are not your brother. You are a bastard in this house. We are a bastard in this house. You are not our fault. So that team, all of them gather outside and begin to say a lot of things for him. He was holding his Bible. At once, he looked up, he looked down, and he started. He dropped his Bible in their presence. He, he dropped it in their presence and turned back to go. Like a point of saying that I'm dropping this, but not with happiness. You know, when somebody is angry, he drops something, bah! and he turned back to go. By turning back, there is a car coming and they clear him there. He killed him there. As he died there, he died in their presence. As he dropped the Bible, as he turned to say he wants to go back, there's a car coming and they clear him there in the spot. And they went to go and bury him. Don't, don't judge yet. Sir. Where is this man going? Wait, let's finish. After six months later, the father, who was an imam, gave his life to Jesus. And when he gave his life to Jesus, all the other imam came to him. And he said, you are a wicked man. He said, what have I do? He said, you are a bad person. You are a wicked man. We remember the time your, your own son gave his own life to Jesus Christ. You are the one that persecuted him and allowed him to die. Eh? And the man replied, said, he said, well, about my son giving his life to Jesus Christ, I don't know. But one thing I can say about this is that I am not a fool like him. And I know what I have accepted. And I'm ready to die for what I have accepted. He did not know what he has accepted. Then, but for me, I know. And the man stood on his feet. Please, where do you think the brother is going? The man who persecuted him later gave his life to Jesus. He himself has went to hell for denying Christ. Which means, as he has stand on his feet, probably God will have saved the father's soul just as he has saved six months later. But he dropped it because of the love he has for his family. That's what Jesus is saying there. He said, he that loves his spirit more than he himself, or the children, or his husband, more than he himself, is not worthy for the kingdom of God. You must take a personal decision that your wife is not special to you. Your husband is not special to you like God. Your children is not special to you like God. Let God be number one. God bless you. God be with you. This is a short message I want to give to you. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that it will help you and we help every one of us in this journey of faith. God bless you. Please don't just go. Subscribe to the channel so that you can hear more of God's message. And you can stand to the end. Subscribe and press the notification button. God bless you. And bye-bye.